Well, good morning to all of you shooters and reloaders out there. Fortune Cookie 45LC coming to you from the Hotland Zone. And today's video is a video response to TJ Moore Music. And his question is, he's got a lever action rifle and he wants to take the rear sight, that's a buckhorn, off and replace it with a plug. Well, so first of all, I went ahead and did a search on YouTube and there aren't too many videos about this and I'd like to present some information concerning this particular project. Now, of course, all rifles are checked to assure of unloaded condition plus no ammunition is anywhere in the vicinity. Now, we like to go ahead and place our rifle in a vise that's well padded with a pressure area right here where the vise is and then we snug that down until that rifle does not move. There it is. And first of all, you're going to look at why are you doing this? Well, you don't like the buckhorn sight, you want something better or something different. Or you want to put a receiver sight on here, perhaps a Williams, or you want to put a Skinner sight or excess sights, this kind of thing, apertures. Those are better sights. Or, as you see here, we had to raise this rear sight up quite a bit to get zeroed and it's kind of out there really high we might want to go ahead and put a different sight on there that will let us have better adjustments such as a scope sight perish the thought sometimes we do wind up with scope sights for other reasons than we want to use a magnification scope well first thing is you want to see if you have a folding leaf rear sight because if you do you don't have to take it off Leave the sight on there, fold it down, and it won't get in the way of skinners or excess or scope sights. But, if you've got a buckhorn sight, those won't fold. So you've got to take it off. First thing you want to do is go ahead and mount your skinners or your excess or your Williams receiver sight and look through the aperture and see if you can see the sight picture using the old rear sight. Because if you can, you're more or less zeroed in. This will assure also that the front sight that you already have will work with your new Skinner or Excess or Williams sight. Because you'll use the same sight line. So the rear sight is very handy to have on there to get your, your rear sight, your new rear sight back here properly installed. But once you've got it installed though, you want to take this sight off. Now, if you put a scope sight on, you may not have to take it off because you either have a folding leaf or it doesn't get in the way of the scope, you can leave it on. And the mount has a center channel, so if I take the scope off, I can still use the rear sight. So I want to leave the rear sight on. But if none of these things work, you want to take this sight off. So here's how you do it. The way these sights work is that the whole back end of the sight is not attached to the barrel where it joins the barrel is a dovetail here that the little dovetail extension fits into the dovetail on the barrel and is actually friction fit in there so that you drift this sight from left to right to get the windage adjustment and the way you do it is you use a brass punch that you place right on that little surface that is made for the adjustment to be done and then you tap with a mallet preferably a plastic mallet like this one here that will not mar but you want to tap that out and the brass punch should not hit the barrel and you shouldn't get your finger caught in there so you just go ahead and tap 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 and you can move this sight left to right well, if you want to remove this sight, all you do is continue drifting until the whole sight drifts out. And that's how you remove the sight. 
Now before you drift the side out, the best thing to do is to take the pressure off of the rear sight, any downward pressure, by taking the ladder and putting it into its lowest position. And you might even want to take the ladder out because you can lift this up and then the ladder will slide out through the slot. So this ladder will come out. Then if the back end of the rear sight is bearing on the barrel, as you drift it out, that might scratch your barrel. So what you want to do is lift the rear sight up and put a playing card underneath and then you drift it out. No damage to your barrel will occur. So you see here, this is my 1894 Marlin that I put the Williams receiver sight on. And when I looked through this aperture sight and adjusted the rear sight and went ahead and adjusted this rear sight, I could actually see through the old rear sight and see the front sight perfectly so that I knew that this was perfectly set. Then I went ahead and drifted the old one out so the old rear sight was sitting in there and just drifted it and drifted it until it slid out. And I took the ladder off so that there's no marring. So you see there's no marring of this barrel at all. Now when you're drifting a sight out, it doesn't matter if you drift it from the right to the left or the left to the right. Because we drift this thing back and forth or side to side anyway when we make windage adjustments it really doesn't matter which way you drift it out but when you drift things in sometimes when you buy something that's for a dovetail when you measure one side or the other one side might have a little smaller dimension than the other and if that's the case you want to drift it in from the small side first because it'll drift in easier that way so for example, this particular dovetail here has one end that is 367 and the other end is 374. So of course if you try and drive it in from the 374 end instead of the 367 end you're going to have a lot more harder time. So whatever end the 367 is, this one would best be driven in from left to right. Now if your new sight or plug that you're putting in is too tight, then you can simply take some sandpaper and sand the lower surface the underside of your sight and that will actually reduce the dimension here and once you do that a little at a time until you can get that to start easily say a third of the way to a half of the way into that dovetail then you can use your brass punch and drive it the rest of the way in however there's nothing to be said that you have to put in a plug because if you notice the nice bluing here and there's no marring of this, you can go ahead and leave it without a plug. If you plug this, what happens is you'll get the, the appearance of something that is excess, whereas if you leave the dovetail, it looks like it's a little bit missing there, but that's not really a problem. And there is very little chance of damaging that dovetail really. If you do get some damage later on, that won't affect how you drive other things into that dovetail. So I prefer to leave it out. But TJ Moore Music, you can and go ahead and install a plug the way we discussed. What those plugs were made for is when there's actual need to open this up with files and milling and this kind of thing and so all the bluing is missing so then you take a blued plug and drive that in and that makes it look proper so that's what those plugs are really made for if your rifle doesn't have that milled and worked over appearance you don't have to put a plug in now notice all work is done with the rifle securely in a vise plus We've always safe checked every one of the firearms we're dealing with. 
Now with properly padded vise and care in the use of our brass punches and mallets and this kind of thing, there's no damage to anything. We've got a good result. And so uh, shooters and reloaders out there, take care. We'll see you in the next video.